Well, we're finally here. 82 out of 82. What a season. Disappointment, a lot of lows, a couple amazing highs. And at the end of the day, just some fun games and some bad games in there. Like, this season, no matter how much it upset me, it, you know, angered me, you know, gave me hope, gave me no hope. Insanity was thrown around a lot at the start of the season. Two different coaches... And then on top of it, to end it all, we find out this is the last game that Dennis Byak will be commentating for the Winnipeg Jets before he goes into retirement. The man who's been commentating every game for over a decade. So yeah, a pretty emotional end to the season, especially when you consider just how bad that second period was this game. But welcome one and all to the Winnipeg Jets final 2021-2022 season game recaps, whatever you want to call these, my recap reaction season for, I guess, season two. This is the second full season that I've covered for the Winnipeg Jets. A wild ride the last couple of years, and I cannot wait to be covering next season as well as all the offseason stuff. So yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy to be here. It's crazy to be here. This is going to be kind of like not only the recap reaction for tonight's game 82 out of 82 against the Seattle Kraken where the Jets come back in the third period, score, uh, score what, three unanswered goals, I believe it is, to take the lead and win by a score of 4-3 to three over the Kraken in the final game of the 2021-2022 NHL season. Across the board, the season is over. The regular season is done. The playoffs are on the horizon. So let's talk about the Winnipeg Jets 2021-2022 season. It was a bad one. And a disappointing one, and one that we all hope this team will grow from with change into next year. We have a lot to discuss in this offseason, but before we do that, and before we get to the kind of recapping this whole year, let's talk about this game, because this game was fun, and it wasn't fun. Like, I'm not going to lie to you guys, during that entire second period, after the first period where Morgan Baring gets his second of the season uh, from Harkins, the fourth line and third line were great tonight, but nonetheless, after that first period, I was happy. I thought this was a close game. The Jets were playing some fun hockey. The building had some energy in it. It was just great hearing all the stuff with Dennis Bayak pregame, during the game, intermissions. It was, it, it was fun. It, it was a game that I definitely didn't want to miss, and uh, for once, didn't want to miss Kevin Sawyer and Dennis Bayak's commentating because uh, it really wasn't Ke Kevin Sawyer giving his shit opinions. It was just uh, them talking about each other, and it's nice to hear that because at the end of the day it's going to be very strange to have someone else commentating the Jets games next year whether or not even Kevin Sawyer is back or not I'm 99% sure he will be to have a different voice in that booth is going to be very very different so it was just nice to hear some fun play action getting called tonight in that first period then the second period starts and the Kraken score three unanswered goals from Wenberg, Sprong, and Shanahan That's like I, I was I was beyond I was I was angry I was sad I was depressed I was everything because I wasn't even I wasn't even like raging mad I was just like really like I, I like I expect no nothing less from this team to blow a game this important for the standpoint that it's Dennis Bayek's last game give the fans something that to hold on to if Dennis Bayek's last game is the Jets lost in a season they they don't make the playoffs that is just not not a way anyone wants to go out for the final game in the co commenting the NHL. So I was upset. I was like, they're really going to do this. They're really going to blow it, and they're going to play like crap and play a good 20 minutes and shit away the last 40, just like we've seen all year long. But they didn't. They didn't do that. They rallied behind some great goaltending from Eric Comrie and some good timely scoring and some great zone entries. Blake Wheeler from Paul Stastny. Paul Stastny again tonight. I don't think I actually think it was this point. 800 career points for Paul Stastny. Uh, I, we're going to be talking a lot about him in the coming up weeks into the offseason and everything, but God damn it, I want him back on the Jets. I'm going to say it now, and I'll explain why in another video, but you give him less money than what you gave him this year, even though he was more productive than last year. He's older. Give him less money and make him a bottom six guy. Don't put him in the top six. I know Wheeler likes to play with him, but Paul Stastny has value still. And I would love to have him down there in that third or fourth line, uh, kind of as a veteran presence, you know, and a guy that doesn't play eight minutes a night. We get a new coach in here, some new systems. We use four even lines. I think Paul Stassi down there would be great. And I'll talk more about that in another video. But, Paul, congrats on 800. I love you. And please don't leave again. Just one more year. Retire a jet. If you retire, either retire this year or retire next year. Either way, retire a jet because... Man, I love Paul Stastny, but Paul Stastny gets his 800 on a great Blake Wheeler goal. Jets have some life. Then, Jets go bang, bang. Dennis Bayek gets to say his line. Dominic Tonnato, his seventh of the year, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that is also a career high in goals for him. Let me go look at his career real, real quick. It is. This is his career high for points with 14 points on the season. I know that's not much, but career high for Dominic Tonnato. Congrats to him. His seventh of the year. Jets have some more life. They go bang, bang, but not only do they go bang, bang, they go bang, 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 because Kyle Connor gets his 47th of the year. He doesn't hit 50, but goddammit, sets the franchise record, sets the franchise record in goals for single season points and a lot of other stuff as well, even strength, you name it. This man was a 
beast this year. He gets for his 47th of the year from Dubois and Appleton. That's Dubois 32nd. Dubois ends up on the year having a total of 60 points in 81 games. Not too shabby for a guy. That is, um, if I'm not mistaken as well, pulling up his career stats. That is a new career high in goals and in assists and in points. A great year for Dubois. A uh, really good bounce back year. And he's going to be an interesting concept and talk, talk conversation point this offseason too. Because we got a lot we're going to have to be talking about with these guys. And whether or not they're coming back to the Jets. Kyle Connor, like I said, gets that goal from Appleton as well. Gets an assist secondary on that. It's just Barron gets two point a night again. Like we win, we come back, we win. We get a great send off to Dennis ba Dennis Bayak. He talks to the whole arena at the end. He gets a great, great send off. The Jets give him a win. He gets to say his famous lines, and the season's over. And just like that, we are out of the playoffs. No more Jets hockey. Next real thing we have to look forward to is the draft lottery. See what that's going to be, how that's going to go. Even though we don't have the best odds, anything can happen as we've seen in the past couple of years. So maybe the Jets move up a little bit, maybe they don't. But either way, we're going to have draft coverage we're going to be talking about. We're going to have free agency. We're going to have trades. We're going to have new coaching staff. We're going to have potentially new management. The whole shebang. Exit interviews will be around very soon. This is going to be a very interesting offseason. The Jets failed by all accounts this year. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. The season's done now, so you can put all the rage you've had towards it. You can be angry still, but the rage side of things, put it back in the down back burner for now. Because now, that rage can just kind of settle there, boil it a little bit. You know, let it simmer. Because we need to focus on the future. Right now... I am optimistic because I have no other choice but to be optimistic. This team needs to regroup and change some things. Now, whether or not you want Shifley traded or someone else traded, I don't know. I'm kind of okay with tra trading Shifley. If he's here next year, it is what it is. But I'm not opposed to a trade either, especially if we get a really good return for him. So... This is going to be a lot to talk about. We know for a fact that the bench will be cleared out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This entire coaching staff will be back. Huddy, everyone's gone. We'll have brand new coaching, new assistants, a new head coach, the whole shebang. That'll all be there. My honest to God opinion, and I'll talk about this again in other videos down the line when we get closer and closer to more bigger offseason dates and as well just the start of preseason training camp and whatnot. I believe 100% Shovel Dayoff will be back with his team. When I look at this team, this year especially, I don't blame Shovel Dayoff. Now, you can say whatever you want about him, and I, I know I've, I've had some gripes with him, and I still do, don't get me wrong, but... This roster was great on paper. Coaching could not get anything out of it. Paul Maurice failed to get anything new out of this lineup, and it was his plays, his systems were all stale. Look how bad the power play and penalty kill was. I'll give I'll give credit to Dave Lowry. That stuff got better when we had a new coach come in because at least it wasn't as stale as the stuff we've been throwing out for five years. But when we got really settled in with Paul, uh, Dave Lowry and nothing changed, that was the sign that we needed to complete coaching staff overhaul. There is a lot of talent on this team. Whether or not they're going to click together or not in the future, I don't know. Cole Perfetti is going to be full-timer next year. That'll be great. Dylan Sandberg, 110% has earned a spot opening night roster already with this team based on his play in the later half of the season. He is going to be a really, really big stud, good, good stud back there in a full-time rookie position. That's a guy you're going to want to keep your eyes on. Vili Hinola had a great year on the Moose, played good with the Jets when given opportunity, even though it wasn't enough opportunity. He should make the team next year. I don't see a world where Vili Hinola doesn't get a spot with a new coaching staff, especially if he's able to have a pretty good, decent preseason where he's able to show some good defensive structure as well as his offensive uh prowling I guess you know the way he's able to prowl with that puck find those passes and just get shots on net through lanes that you don't see often that's the type of stuff that's going to excite me for this future maybe uh trading out somebody or signing Dubois long term you know and I'm not talking about trading Dubois but giving him that money signing him moving out of Brendan Dillon and I know Brian Brendan Dillon was just given an award I don't remember what award from the team only three guys got one I'm a little surprised Brendan Dillon got it but Brendan Dillon needs to be moved. And it's not because he's bad. It's because at $4 million, Dylan Sandberg does everything he does better. And he's on an entry-level deal. You need to capitalize on young players making less money and put that type of cap pit that Brendan Dillon was making into signing Dubois and maybe adding some other talent around them. Now, I don't know if Zach Sanford comes back. If you're asking me, he better freaking not. We wasted a fourth-round pick for not even a single goal from that slug. I don't want him back on this team. Mason Appleton, we have RFA control over. Sign that man long-term. I want Mason Appleton for that bottom six. I think he's got a lot of potential still. And the longer that he was here with the Jets after that trade deadline, he settled into a really good role. And I thought he was just finally starting to get going the last maybe five games of that season. So I want him back next year. I think he'll be a good replacement for Andrew Kopp, whether or not you want to use him in the third or fourth. But you guys, a big thing you have to remember going into next season is that if we do get a new coach, 
Fingers crossed we can roll out four even lines of strength and not have to watch if Evgeny Svechnikov, Jansen Harkins, Adam Brooks, all these decent bottom six guys playing five to less or less minutes a night. That's just insane to me at the NHL, the modern NHL. You've got good, hard-working players playing five minutes or less a night. What's the point in even dressing them? Throw in some young guys just because they can say they were in the NHL if you're going to play them four minutes a night, if you're going to overwork the rest. This is the type of stuff that killed the Jets this year. And I said it last year, and I said it this year, and it still applies. Next year's coaching staff has to bring fresh ideas to get the most out of this current core. Because like we've already seen from Chipman and from Shovel Dayoff, this team isn't known to make reactionary moves. Now, I know it, 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 and let's be real, it's not reactionary based on what we've seen to let go of coaching staff and overhaul it. It's bound to happen. Dave Lowry will not be back next year. If he is, then I literally have no hope for this team. Because do you really believe, I ask you this genuinely, even if you're the most diehard fan who even love Palmer hated seeing him go you 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 hate nothing about this team do you really want to see Dave Lowry coach this team after what we saw in the limited games that we saw with him for what the later half of the season do you really want that back behind the bench or do you want to see this team be elevated with something new keep the team identical for all I care I'd be a little cautious and not as optimistic as I would hope to be going into next season if it was identical with this roster but if it had a new coaching staff that I actually had a little bit of faith in I would be you know a little bit calmer I would would I be as calm as I would be if they, you know, traded a Dylan, restructured with some youth, and potentially made some other moves up front? Maybe a Shifley trade? I don't know. Again, I'm not 100% sound on that idea. I don't know. But hope needs to be reestablished within that locker room and within this fan base. We know this team is good. We, when you look at the stats, when you pull up the Winnipeg Jets stats that they were able to have this year, season's done. Let's look at it. 79 games played for Kyle Connor, 93 points. Mark Shifley, 70 points in 67 games. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 60 points in 81 games. Blake Wheeler, 60 points, 80, 65 games, excuse me. 65 games, 60 points. Blake Wheeler was just shy of a point per game, and we all still think he doesn't belong in that top six, but he still put up empty points there. So imagine him in a limited role that suits him better. Ehlers, 55 points in 62 games. Stastny, at 36 years old, 45 points in 71 games. Josh Morrissey, a career year. Neil Pionk, Struggled, but still put up good offensive numbers. Nate Schmidt struggled in the later half, but still put off good offensive numbers and rebounded dramatically from where he was last year. Adam Lowry had a career high in goals this year. Brennan Dillon had 20 points this year. It doesn't seem like he would put up 20 points with how much inconsistent he was at times, but 20 points. Svechnikov, 19 points, playing five minutes a night for more than half this season. There is good players on this team. There is structure here that we just need to re- you know, resettle it. I don't know what even the right word is, but a new coach is needed. That's the biggest problem. Do I want to see some other stuff be shaken up because I'm a hockey fan and I like big headlines and big news and I like trades? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, if you want to see even anything remotely improve with this Jets team, coaching is where it starts. And we will get better. We will get there. But at the time being, if you don't think this roster does have some potential, then and it, I don't know what to say to you because even though this roster pissed me off this year, their play was terrible at times, the inconsistency, everything, the insanity, the same plays, ah, all of it, the lack of defense, all of that stuff. At the end of the day, there is talent on this roster. There is. They need to find a way to utilize and reach deep down and restructure how they use this talent and how they play as a team. Because my god, if we waste this core another year and maybe make barely struggle for a wild card with a team this deep, with a Vesna winning goaltender, I know Hellebuck had his down points this year, but if you blame Hellebuck for this season after the years of him carrying us with no back end, then my god, you're insane. This team has hope. It just needs to find someone to steer that hope in the right direction. And right now, we have no captain in that captain in that room. I know Blake Wheeler is Blake Wheeler, but let's be real. And the, when you give reins over to a captain to lead and he fails and he can't get the best out of it, it's time to change how you handle things in that room. Now, I'm not saying Blake Wheeler is a bad captain, but clearly he's lost the reins from this team that went to a Western Conference final to now that can't even make the playoffs with a damn good blue line or play any, remote, any amounts of consistent hockey. Do you guys know this is like the four? What? What? I actually, you know, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, the uh, the last time we had a four game win streak. I want to say it was a month ago, but still, we end the season on a four game win streak, and that alone is tied for one of our longest win streaks of the damn season. That's why we didn't make the playoffs this year. Losing to teams like Arizona, getting shut out at home, losing to teams. All over the place, man. Everywhere we lost. Arizona, Buffalo. We lost to the Canucks. You name it. Like you, you just look through the standings. Look through the teams below us and how many games we blew. 
That's what killed us. We need a real coach. Something b behind that bench to scare the shit out of the players into actually playing hockey together. That's what we need. I don't want to keep going on any longer. This has been 15 minutes. Well, thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed those 15 minutes. But this season's been angry. This season's been hard to watch at times. But at the end of the day, they're my Jets. As just as you're, they're your Jets. They're our Winnipeg Jets. They will get better. You have to have faith. I do. Even though I was so angry and I preached all the crap that I preach, I believe that still. But this team has talent. It has future in the prospects. We need to enforce those prospects. A new coach, maybe trade a defenseman, maybe trade someone up front. I don't know, but this team has potential. Not to mention the fact that they could get another really good player and a Connor Geeky even potentially in the draft if he falls to them or an abundance of other talent, which we'll be talking about in the coming up months. We have hope. Just hold on to that right now. The moment that things start to go down the wrong direction, then bring that fucking anger off the back burner and let it boil and get mad because I will be there with you getting mad just alongside every other Jets fan that has a brain and realizes that if we roll out the same crap this season with the same coaching style and same coaches, we will go nowhere. I'll be yelling alongside with you. But until those steps are made, until that we set on that, on that path, down that path, hope, hold on to the hope. Just hold on to it a little bit. I know it's hard, and I know that I've been not the most hopeful guy and calm guy myself this season, but goddamn, I love the Jets, and when they play this bad, it makes me angry. But I, at the end of the day, I'm a fan, and I'm going to hold on to this hope. I'm going to cover the offseason as best as I can for all of you guys. I'd love to hear your types of thoughts on what you want to see get covered in the offseason, conversation videos, players you want to say keep, go, trades, anything. You comment it all down in the comment section below. I will read it all, respond to you all. We're in for the long haul now, boys. It's going to be an interesting offseason. Thank you so much for watching this. all these recap reactions and all the content this season. It means the world to me. It really does. This channel grew in the last year. I don't even know how many subscribers this season. Let's go ahead and find it out right now and look at the numbers over the last, like what, custom days. Let's go. Start of the season. All right, here we go. September. Here we go. Let's go from started in October right here. Let's just say, for, let's just do this. Over four, 500 subscribers this year. Over 107,000 combined views. Insane. You guys were insane this year. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all. Like, like without you guys watching, I wouldn't be making this videos. And I'm just glad that someone out there enjoys the content that I make and enjoys talking and hearing my opinions. Thank you all. I also want to give a huge shout out to Zach and Carter Nolan of the Nolan Hockey Podcast. Some of my best friends that I've met by doing this. These guys make great content. They've been along my side uh, since the start. When we both started making content roughly around the same time in the pandemic, they've had a great year and grown, so shout out to them. Ryan of Hot Garbage Sports, great coverage of the Jets along with the entire league this season, so shout out to him. I also want to give out a shout out to Jet Centric Podcast and all their stuff they do on Twitter and on YouTube and through Spotify, Apple Music, where the podcasts they create are available for you to listen to. Uh, they're awesome, they have great opinions, and they really help you know, send the messages of a younger uh, Jets kind of fan base and help, you know, just kind of unite people together within the Jets community. Shout out to the Jets Reddit page. Shout out to all of Jets Twitter. Uh, Dennis Bayak, you're an absolute legend. And thank you so much for the last 11 years of commentating my team. Um, all of TSN for the game coverage. Even you, Kevin Sawyer. Um... God, there's so many other people. Jets Hub on YouTube, another guy that's creating great content as of late. Uh, it really means a lot to see guys coming on and creating content. I love to see Jets fans doing that. Uh, I love watching it. So if you guys want to start talking about the Jets, just film yourselves on your phone and put it out there because I will definitely retweet it and try to get people to listen to it because the more of us that do this, the better it is for the fan base and connecting all of us together and sharing opinions. I'm going missing people out there. All the Jets accounts on Twitter. Um, hanger. Uh, hanger. Got, uh, uh, oh, my God. There's just so many of them. I can't even remember all of the top of my head. So many people. Uh... I, seriously, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all the mods uh, for the live streams, even though there weren't that many this uh, this season, and uh, everything else. You guys are legends. So with that being said, thank you so much. I mean, from the bottom of my heart for an amazing year talking about the Jets and covering them. Hit that link down in the description below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to keep up to date with all my th uh, opinions and news things that happen in the NHL world for the playoffs and onwards. Uh, follow me on Twitter. It's a great way to stay in, uh, in contact with my opinions and just with me. Also, my DMs are open at any time. Shoot me a message if you want me to cover something, if you just want to talk or anything else. I'm always open to uh, conversations. DMs are always open on both platforms. So with that being said, peace, love, and positivity as always. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you guys in the coming weeks uh, with more Jets content. It's been a hell of a ride. Yeah, it ends in disappointment, 
but it's not time when you're not going to win every year. So thank you, Jets. Thank you, all of you. Go, Jets, go. I will see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. That's a wrap for Recap Reaction Season 2.